I just want to say, when it comes down to black leadership, there's so many of us that sit on the sideline and we'll watch a brother who's doing something. If a brother working with the youth, if the brother is trying to, you know, build his community any type of creative way that he can as man. A lot of us sit on the sideline and we'll talk about the brother, this, this, this. If you feel that you are so much better, there's nothing wrong with that. But what you need to do is implement action. Rather than just talk back and sit back about whatever it is, it can be in your community, it can be on a national level, it can be on a local level. As long as you sit back on the sideline and you're just talking about a person and you're just trying to look for a way to not let them achieve whatever ladder they climb, I think that needs to cease. If you can do it better, jump and lace your boots up and do whatever you got to do as a human being, as a woman, a man, whatever position you are, to do the same thing that they're doing. And if you can't do it better, then do it better. But if all of us, so many people that just sit back and they talk and we just look for any flaw, any flaw. A living can have any flaw. He can. Oh, yeah. Uh, I heard that he drank red wine. Oh, I heard that the I heard he I heard he had a girl. He, he, this one not married. Oh, I heard he married, but he had a child. Out of, it's like, come on, nobody, none of our leaders, I repeat this, none of our leaders is going to be perfect. The black leadership, um, which is a, a delicate subject because Black leadership is a response to black problems. So when we have someone that raises up their consciousness enough in their mind to say, well, there's a problem and I'm going to try to come up with solutions to it. That is the foundation for black leadership. Now, in a situation you have problem solvers and you have problem makers. So that starts the rub between the two. The problem, the people who cause problems, feel like, well, what's the problem? Whereas the victims of these problems are saying, hey, you stepped on my toes, or you're violating my rights as a human being. So when we have these charismatic leaders that rise up, and historically, if you look at the history of the world, men always rise up. Where there's a problem, some man or some woman or some group of people will rise up to address the problem. And so this is what we're dealing with. And in our history of America, there have been many problems and many leaders, leaders to rise up. So... Today I'm here with Brother, Brother Leo, and we are talking about leadership, black leadership in our communities. And sometimes I feel like we are we follow fame, just like everything else, money, power, and respect. It's like if the person who gets up to the plate has the bat in his hand, ready to take a swing, before that brother can even take a swing, is wait, 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 wait. Does this brother have money, power, or respect? And so those things become the topic. How important is money to you? What does money look like to you? Power, where does that come from? What type of power are you looking at and respect? What type of respect is it that you're looking for? Because anyone who has the power to stand up, to come to the bag, to place that bag in his or her hand, that person automatically has a wealth that you may not possess. So when it comes to money, power, and respect, it's something that is internal. It has nothing to do with an outside source. And when it comes to leadership, the only person that you can look for money, power, and respect in is yourself. Where do you stand? Is your, do you have a wealth of knowledge? Do you have the power to say no? Do you have the respect to apply discipline to your life? And so with that being said, when we don't have those things for ourselves, we're looking at the person who's at back, who has that back in their hand, and we're comparing ourselves to that person. And you know, this person looks like me. We about the same height, about the same age. How can this person have that wealth, that respect, and that power, and I have none? So when we get to the point of self-acceptance and where we are in our lives, then it will become easier to support a brother who may be in a place that's a little few steps ahead of me. But guess what? In unity, you should know that you are not there, but you can get there. See, 
where we get stuck in leadership is that, you know, that person with the bat in his hand, you feel like that person had the power to point a finger at you in the fact that you aren't even in the game. So it all boils back to the ego. It boils back to self. So we can't, you can't see things. You can't expect for a person to see you in the sky when they can't get past the ground. It comes down to talking about black leadership, not religious based. I'm talking about black. None of our leaders are perfect. So I think that's one thing that we need to break out of our heads, psychologically, and realize this leader is a human being. The thing is, they just are in a position to where they are doing something where we can benefit off of. And me as a man, if any black man out there, a brother throughout America, all the way to the motherland, if he's doing something, that's I'm going to support it. Because he's, and I'm sitting like this, no, I'm gonna support my brother. That's just me. So I feel a lot of sideline people, stop blowing smoke up on that leader that's trying to bring other people up. Stop that. Stop trying to throw rocks at that brother. Stop trying to de deteriorate other people from listening or being a part of whatever movement it is. Because if it's about black love and black, what is wrong with that? It's black love and black beauty. That's what this person is bringing. They're not talking about nothing demonic. They're not talking about bringing down women. They're not talking about beating women or doing some sick behavior. They're not glorifying drugs. They are talking about uplifting their people. So why not? Why not? But a lot of us do this by the sideline. Or else we'll get on social media and we will talk about the leader just because they might not talk like you. They can't articulate their words as good as you. I apologize. Whatever, I'm apologizing for any black leader out there that doesn't present themselves the way you would want. But if you feel that you can, I feel that if you have that leader quality, step up to the plate. Or else create your own boat to where you're the captain on there. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. If you can do it better, do it. That's just me. That, I feel that's a major solution is to stop sitting on the sideline talking about other black men and black women that are trying to, sac that's sacrificing their life. They, a lot of black leaders don't get paid for it. They ain't receiving no benefits. They ain't receiving no 401k. They putting their life on the line. They putting their life on the line. But a lot of us sit on the sidelines just like this and look for a reason to see this person. Oh, I knew that it was on fair. I just knew it. Oh, oh. We got to break that. They say in the court of nature, the lions, as judges always find the antelopes guilty. Same situation dealing with human beings. When we have lions or men and women that raise up among, amongst us and start pointing the finger at problems, then the problem makers lash back. And they lash back in a way of degrading, demeaning, attacking, uh, Showing disconsent. I mean, and that happens. That has happened with every prominent leader in America, from Christmas Addicts in the, in the uh, Revolutionary War to, to Frederick Douglass to Abraham Lincoln to Marcus Garvey to uh, particularly Carter G. Woodson, you know, who was a very prickly man, a hard man, an African descended man, and no one liked him. He was. His own people was kind of turned against him because of his, his dedication to what was right, to what was good. Muhammad Ali, when he first became Muhammad Ali, he was one of the most devout men in America. But 40 years later, at the time of his death, he was a world love icon because he, he stayed focused on leadership, he fo stayed focused on what was right. We have, to, we have to get behind leaders who come up with good solutions to our problems. They're the negative people who are always going to go against them, always going to try to demean them, always try to marginalize them. But as we go further and we, 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 we share enlightenment more with each other, we will overcome this. We're in the age of Aquarius where good leadership Sound leadership and sound solutions are the only things that's going to flourish. Because it's not about a name, it's about action, it's about energy, it's about love. Because guess what? You can feel all of those things. One thing that say everything done from this point on will be done with a feeling. So if you feel nothing, if you can't support your brother, 
if you can't even see for yourself that your circumstances your current circumstances are temporary and that you will move past them. Get some help. That same brother that you're pointing out, call him, ask, request help. That's another thing, get help. We are not all, we are not all on the same levels. That's why it's our job to take each other's hand, to take each other's hand and whether it's up like and whether I'm bringing you up or what thing, can't do is go down, but I will hold your hand. I will continue. I will not let you go if you show me, if you energize the fact that you want to be better. So when it comes to leadership, it starts with ourselves. It starts with our confidence. It starts with where we want to be, where we're going. And if you are satisfied with your current circumstances, that is acceptable too. However, do not point a finger or bring down someone who has not accepted their current circumstances. And that's where we start with leadership in our communities, with ourselves. So break that the psychological mind frame of having a lack of distrust, a lack of support. We gotta learn to say, this is my brother, this is my sister, and they are trying to do something good. And if I can give them something to help them and say, hey, let me fix your top for let me pop, let me fix your collar for you, but brother, next time, that's one thing, but for me to sit back, he got muscle stain on his shirt. You feel me? That's just me. So, you know, we gotta break that and we gotta have that love, man. Because anytime I see a black man that's doing something, even if I don't like his personality, I care for him, I refuse to disrespect this brother for whatever it is he's doing because he's doing something to benefit the nation of black people. And that's to any black man out there that chooses to put their life on the line in his game of chess. That's just me. So if you're a black person out there and you know a leader that's might be in your community out close by you, support that person. Show love to that person. You ain't got to have a full conversation with them because you might not agree with everything they say. But ain't nothing wrong with saying, oh yeah, yeah, you know, show that person love. I'm going to be there. Or else, yeah, I would recommend you going there. Ain't nothing wrong with it or helping that person. Come on now, come on now. But a lot of us sit on that sideline, so all the side, we have so many sideline individuals nowadays that get on social media that will write blogs about people that will make videos just breaking another black person who's doing nothing but trying to uplift. We gotta break that. That's the solution to me, breaking the psychological negativity, the demonic, the depressing, the frustration that you have towards your own brother and sister because they're doing something. They just stepped up to the plate. They done put themselves in the shoes and say, you know what, I'm gonna do this. Come on now, what's, what's wrong with that? That ain't nothing but love. And if that's not love to you, I think you need to do some soul searching. That's just me. That's